What pushes us to come here? Maybe the motivation of exploring remote places inside extreme conditions. We want to discover new mountains and be the first ones to ski them. Sébastien Varlet, a French skier looking for new challenges, was the one who organized this trip. And now the whole team is stuck in a snowstorm in one of the worst places to be. Let me introduce Tao from Austria, a skier always keen to go on adventures with the smile and good vibes. And this is David from Sweden. He was super excited about this expedition and loves freezing weather. Now it's starting to look like the Arctic. Storm, white out. Oh, we're gonna be coasting up in the tent tonight. In these conditions, it's uh, easy to forget about the polar bear watch. So if everybody goes inside the tent now, uh, just remember that somebody has to stay outside and watch once in a while. On this island, some polar bears can come and attack us at any time and we can't see more than 20 meters away with this white out. How did we end up here? Well, let's get back a few months before. Every ski enthusiast is waiting all year long for good conditions. To ski some nice lines on beautiful mountains. But this winter was really dry in the Alps. Tondosh, dropping in 3, 2, 1. Our desire to find some good snow was really strong, so we left our home mountains to chase it. We headed north, up north, to a place with countless mountains, the northernmost settlement on Earth, Svalbard. It's a group of islands in the heart of the Arctic Ocean a wild place shaped by ice and rocks, larger than Switzerland, with four months of darkness and four months of daylight per year. But most importantly, it's an island with plenty of beautiful mountains. Joined by four courageous locals, we felt strong enough for this expedition. With snowmobiles, plenty of food and warm clothes, we were ready to explore this intimidating island. Before leaving for the wild, we went for a short line near Longyear Bin. Neil showed us the safest way to get around on the island. <laughs> Holy shit, man. Ski touring on the island is not that easy. For every tour, we need to anticipate potential places where we could meet polar bears.
We couldn't believe how good the snow was. All we heard about Arctic conditions was ice and wind-packed snow. We didn't realize how lucky we were that day. Driving snowmobile wasn't too hard. And the first lines in this place just blew our minds. We were getting super excited for this exploration. Yeah. Now we're packing up the last stuff to get out over there. Is we good okay. to go? We left to set up a camp on Fridjofbring Glacier, which is located four hours away. We saw there a couple of mountains from the plane on our way in, and the idea was to ski some of them and potentially be the first persons to ride those faces. We set up a base camp far away from the sea to minimize the chances to meet a polar bear. This is Hother, the French local who made this trip possible. He has been living in Svalbard since two years as a meteorologist. And finally, this is Quentin, another Frenchie. Being a big group in this environment was really important for polar bear watches and the safety of the team. The wind is changing. I'm coming from all directions now. So, yeah, we just build a really nice and cozy shelter. That's enough wall. Digging is, uh, is hard. It's exhausting. But look at this. The great wall of Svalbard. <laughs> now it's time for the toilet. <laughs> so I think it's like the most beautiful toilet in the world, I reckon. <laughs> Temperatures were super cold. Our bodies were slowly getting used to the minus 20 degrees Celsius. We have to decide how we do the polar bear watch uh, tonight. Um, so we are seven, take one person awaken for only one hour and then we have to do seven uh, rounds. One person from each tent to, tend to rock, paper, scissors with each other and then in the tent you can do... Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Should we do it together to decide? Yeah, we can. I mean, <laughs> pose is gonna be shit anyway. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's the like. yeah. Yeah. And if you're unsure what you see, wake up someone. Yeah, and there will be two, two guys out there instead of one. <laughs> First polar bear watch. The time is 3 a.m. in the morning. It's a beautiful night. Uh, there's absolutely no wind, but quite fairly cold. The sun is set behind that mountain, and hopefully, we can get, get sun in the morning. We left the camp and drove to a coastline where Seb saw promising faces from the plane. The goal is Mama Bear, we called it. It's like a pretty big, steep face right at the sea. But yeah, I'm not sure to see. Take with, go with crampons, go with the ice axe. Yeah, hopefully there is uh, enough good snow for us to ski it and uh, like a little bit of soft snow would be good. Yeah. It looks pretty icy underneath. <laughs> really icy. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be horrible. You! Five stars of snow? Zero. I'm not sure about it. It kind of worries me. Like if you slip, you'll go all the way down.
saw this mountain uh, on some pictures so we decided to have a look at it uh, the idea was to really have like a, a nice run with the, the view on the ocean and really like ski to the ocean while hiking it was like so so high sea and so cold uh, we decided to to go for it anyways the runs were, were nice quite long but really 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 hard and really high sea yeah, it was quite uh, tough but uh, yeah really nice really nice to be here Yeah, we had some problem with the gun, the rifle. It, the pipe was frozen, so we had to put some warm tea in the barrel. And oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not the best. <laughs> After a quick snack, it was time for us to go back to the camp. The ocean side of Svalbard is really beautiful, but super windy and freezing cold. And snowmobile is the only way to get around the island. Getting stuck with it can put us in a very critical situation. Arthur set up a shooting camp before our next polar bear watch. Even if only the guides are allowed to shoot, it's pretty stressful to be waiting for a bear's attack without knowing how to use a gun. Yeah, boy! <laughs> you got it! Good yeah, boy! You have to do the polar bear watch the whole night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same hit it right at the bottom. Yeah. We did some pretty good shots and we're feeling more confident for our next shift. In the morning, we went to a face more wind protected and closer from the camp. I spotted this face from the plane. We came here and checked it out and it looks amazing, it looks super beautiful. A little bit of soft snow and I think everybody will be super stoked. Okay, so we are this for the second phase of the trip. I was getting ready, a bit like stressed by the drone, wanted to do it really well. 
and I didn't check my uh, my feet and I had some ice underneath. My two ski pop out right when I drop, and that was a pretty sketchy moment. I self-arrest, but uh, if this was happened yesterday or somewhere else icier, I would have gone all the way to the bottom. It's just a um, quick reminder how like Valba is super wide, so we need to be super conscious of what we're doing and don't be stressed for like the filming or the light or anything like that. Just make sure that safety stay on priority. After still uh, got the chance to ski that bad boy and, and leave a nice track on it. Boys! Three, two, one. Yeah, man. Oh, nice Thanks, boys. <laughs> Start from here. Ski to the camp in the most beautiful light possible. Midnight skiing! With the calm there. It's an amazing place. We got all those mountains. <laughs> so sick. It's gonna be perfect. Skiing after midnight was one of the goals in Svalbard. And this is now off Tau and Seb's bucket list. The vibe was high, and the whole team had an amazing day. Neil and Philip joined us the morning after. With two of the locals in the team, we felt confident enough to stay into the wild, and the polar bear watch will be less tiring. <laughs> How far is the helicopter right here? If I drop here, <laughs> 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 give, give me this order a helicopter just back. Frozen ski boots were so hard to put on, but humid gear was not going to stop us to explore this place. We decided to go down to the south part of Fridge of Bring Glacier to explore this area. Like pretty aesthetic. Snow. It's also quite nice. I think we can find three or four iguanas. One for each of us. That's nice. Snow looks way better over there. But this cooler looks way cooler. Make a few turns. And that one, and then go into this one.
just uh, ski this face, you can see behind me. The snow was actually surprisingly good. So I can actually ski fast and push on the edges. That's really nice. Seb was scoping it the other day and I think it did a really good job. Ouais, ce couloir, j'en ai rêvé deux, trois fois, là. C'est bon, on va enfin y aller. L'an dernier, on y était, mais on n'a pas pu y aller. Du coup, cette année, c'est la bonne. Welcome to Svalbard. <laughs> I guess there's no more skiing for today. I send an, an enrich for the weather forecast next six hours and tomorrow. Sweet. So that we can make a decision. I'm, oh, I'm so tired, man. My legs are fucked. Yeah. I, need, I need some sleep, I need some rest and some food. <laughs> yeah. From minute one to ten, I was constantly, should I turn around? Should I go? Should I turn around? Should I go? Ah, come on. It's bad. horrible when it's like that. Yeah, yeah, then they're like, it's not. I don't know, it's not worth it. You're we're going to save our legs for the next weather windows. Yeah. So then we have got, we got those bad boys to do. Yeah, yeah, we got some. Dude, if I have fresh legs, yeah. I really <laughs> want to go up there. With the storm coming earlier than expected, Arthur will have to wait a bit longer to ski that face. It was a struggle to come back to the camp. The whiteout, the crevasses were making the ride really dangerous. The whole team was exhausted, and we were going to experience a storm in Svalbard. Ça te donne envie Ça te donne envie ça aussi On était avec un météorologue, nous a dit les gars, régalade, fenêtre météo. Le Svalbard, vous allez voir, c'est le sud de la France. Il fait beau. Tout le temps, on a la mer. On est seul mec dans la tempête avec le terrain rouge. <rire> ouais, j'avoue. Ouais, c'est pas à cause de l'alcool. Pas encore. Pas encore. The storm was not going to change the vibe. This group of people was truly epic. And we were enjoying every moment of this expedition. Allez, petit pied, jusqu'à une heure du matin. C'est quoi une heure du matin Une heure du matin, on va surveiller s'il n'y a pas les ours qui viennent nous attaquer pendant une heure. Puis ensuite, je te passe le relais. C'est pas mal les lampes. Hein. Eh, C'est confort, hein, notre pied F3 là. <rire> Mesdames, messieurs, merci, bonsoir. Hein. Today we are still uh, in the fog, uh, in the clouds. We can't see anything, we can't ski anything. And this morning we had to take a decision because the weather is not looking to be any better. We decided to leave to Svea, so now we have um, to leave all the camp, take it with us, drive around three to four hours to the next stop and hope for a, a better weather window. That's life uh, in Svalbard. You can't really predict anything and you have to uh, adapt. On est à côté de Svea et la cabine, elle s'appelle Bjornebo. Do you know what it means, Kofa? It's, it says Björnbo, which means a uh, place for bears. Yeah. We left, I think, around two, and now it's six, seven o'clock. Yeah. Including a lunch break and stuff. 
<laughs> it's crazy because <laughs> it looks the same anyways. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. The, the whole day and the whole night looks <laughs> exactly the same. <laughs> about the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every day it's amazing here, I feel. Even if we're not skiing since two days, it's still like such a good trip. We wanted to come here for skiing and uh, slowly we're just enjoying little things. Là, s'il n'est pas beau, on va aller le choper, là. Like the animal, they're not scared of us because they're not used to see us. So we come close to them, they kind of walk away, and then they slightly walk back in, a bit of curious. And we had that with the reindeer or the fox. It really feels like another planet. Like being somewhere else with good friends. You can drive all the way to there, after it's forbidden here. So we're thinking of going to this bowl and that bowl. And we passed from this glacier earlier today, and it was looking really snowy. So I think we can get the same aspect in here. Yeah. The glacier was surging, so they will, they will be really accidented. And big crevasses, cracks, so it should be beautiful there. Yeah. Well, my name is Neil. I work as a research assistant in the Arctic Geology Department of the University in Svalbard. We are now in front of a very beautiful glacier called Valakra Bren. And as you can see, it's a very, very cracked glacier front. And the reason for that is that the glacier, this glacier is actually surging. And uh, when a glacier surge, it flows very, very fast. Glaciers are always moving, they are dynamic. You can hear all the ice breaking, like of glacier advancing. The rate of advance can be up to a few meters every day. So it has changed a lot, for example, from last year to this year. It's been already a few hundred meters of advance. We, yeah, we waited for a weather window. Didn't really get the weather window, but we still did a little hike and skied all of us together. Easy line, we found like a little bit of powder on ice, <laughs> but yeah, it was worth it. collected some souvenirs uh, that we can bring back home to our family and friends. <laughs> Tomorrow we are hoping for some sun again and for some, some big lines. I really hope we can get some more lines in. Our trip is slowly going to the end already. And uh, yeah, we want to ski some more. It's so many great mountains around here. That yeah, they look beautiful and so many good lines we want to ski. We just need the good weather and the good visibility to do it. down here and just slash his spine might get some jumps in but not sure yet. Depends on the snow. Yeah. You can see scooter there. Tao is over there. Yeah I think it's it's pretty epic Zalbard. Yeah. Come on.
Oh, it's Hell yeah! Sick life! <laughs> when you look at the face, yeah. like walking away fine, yeah. with sick lines. Check. Now the, now also the moon over the face. Oh man. Um, today is the last day of the trip. We are not too far away from Longyearbyen uh, in Louis Dalen and uh, we will try to make the best out of the last uh, ray of sun we can get. Hathor was the one who made this trip possible. He organized almost everything for us to have the best time on the island. Thanks for everything, bro. Well, we got mind blown by this trip. We were nine guys from six different countries exploring Svalbard in the search for the most beautiful faces to ski in the Arctic. We didn't know each other before the expedition, but after experiencing all the weather possible, sharing food, tips against the cold, taking good and bad decisions, planning and replanning everything over and over again, we became friends, worked together and solved problems as a team to stay safe out there. The laughs, the cold, the smiles, and the adventure itself in this beautiful landscape made us grateful for all the moments we shared together. Svalbard will hold a special place in our hearts, reminding us the great adventure we had in this unique place with amazing people.